Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Let's praise him this morning. I want y'all to sing it out really loud this morning. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and claim your victory. Let it rise. God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lifted high, with all creation God, all we praise you, oh, 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 oh. We praise you, oh, 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 let faith be the song that overcomes the rage and sea, let faith be the song that calms the storm inside of me. Let it rise, let praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. We cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lifted high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. This morning. And this is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. If you cannot survive when we praise you. praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Cause my God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. 
And I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord
Hallelujah. Give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. 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 And I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God that's never late is working all things out. He's working all things out. Oh, yes, I will lift you high in the same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God that's never late is working all things out. He's working all things out.
have been washed away. That we have a new life. That we are reborn. And that we are children of God. like the rain comes and washes the dirt away, the dust out of the air. And in the spring when the rains come and the sun comes out and things begin to grow and new birth come, Lord, let us be like that, that just new birth will come from us. But it's all because of you. It's, it's not because of anything that we do. We just praise and worship you for doing that in us and for loving us so much. Mm. And Lord, just like that song says, yes, I will. And Lord, as long as I have breath inside of me, Lord, that I will do that. I will praise you. I will worship you. <laughs> loudly <laughs> where everybody knows oh Lord I just praise you and worship you and I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus and the church said amen, amen, amen you can be seated Take your Bibles this morning. Turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take two. 1 Samuel chapter 17. Beginning his new series today. The series is called Living Life Limitless. <laughs> kind of like that. Living Life Limitless. Call it the three L's. <clears throat> and we can do that. Okay, let me say that again. We can do that. Each and every day, we can do that. <laughs> There's a quote that I want to start off with. Got this from Nelson Mandela. Courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. <laughs> the brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers fear. Wow. The, cur the courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it hmm. stand for the reading of God's word 1 Samuel chapter 17 we're going to begin at verse 19 and read through verse 30 it says now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines and David rose early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took the provisions and went as Jesse had commanded him and he came to the encampment as the host was going to the battle line shouting the war cry and Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle army against army and David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage and ran to the ranks and went and greeted his brothers as he talked with them, behold, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came up out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words as before, and David heard him. All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were much afraid. <laughs> and the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely. Surely he has come up to defy Israel 
And the king will enrich the man who kills him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David said to the men who stood by him, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered in the same way, so shall it be done to the man who kills him. Now Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spoke to, to the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, why have you come down? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your presumption and evil over your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, what have I done now? Was it not but a word? And he turned away from him toward another and spoke in the same way. And the people answered again as before. Father, I thank you for your word. <laughs> Lord, there are so many things that we can learn. There are so many things that we can learn from David. Lord, as we begin this series today of living life limitless, and today, Lord, as we look at it from going from afraid to courageous, Lord, let us learn from David. <laughs> Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. <laughs> So picture this, here's the battlefield. You have the Philistines, they're on one mountainside. You have the Israelites and they're on this other mountainside. And in between them is a valley. <laughs> that's, that's really the only thing that separates them. But then there's also Goliath, this undefeated champion that oh well, some say he stands like nine foot tall he's huge and of course the philistines they have all this armor you know they are well known for that they developed all this armor and spears and swords and the shields <laughs> you know they said that the shield well, you know that there was somebody else that would carry his shield for them so you have the valley and then you have this giant, Goliath. But I want to tell you that there is actually something that was greater that separated the Israelites from the Philistines. And it was greater than the valley. It was greater than this giant. It was a label of afraid. I started to make up these things and I was going to put them around my neck. <clears throat> but I didn't have time when I actually thought about it. But that's what's happening. I mean, uh, uh, over the years, the, the, the Israelites, they had got this label of afraid. And when I think of a label, I think of when I was in the Army. You know, everybody had U.S. Army. I think it's right over the right and the name over the left, the last name over the left. So he, you were labeled, so everybody knew who you were. And then on your shoulder, you had the patch of whatever unit you were part of. You were labeled, but here we have the Israelites, and they were labeled with afraid. And this label paralyzed them even more than the giant. And it was so much that it robbed them of the ability to defend their God. It didn't matter. They had nothing else inside of them to do. And this label also produced so much fear in them that they had already come to terms that living as a slave was okay. It was acceptable. They were okay with it. it. It didn't matter. Every day that this Philistine giant came out and he had this war cry, it was like, okay, I'm ready to go be his slave because I'm afraid. But then God sent David 
And every one of us here, we know that David is different. You agree with that? David was different. So David shows up and David doesn't even realize what he's doing. He just knows that his father told him to go check on his brothers. But at the same time, also to carry the commander some, some food. So that's all he knew that he was doing. But God. <laughs> he did not realize that God was fixing to use him in a mighty way. So about the time that David shows up, Goliath challenges the Israelites. And when that happened, anger began to stir up inside David's heart. I mean, you know, it's okay to be angry. It's okay for that anger to, 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 to stir up. You don't allow that anger to cause you to sin. But anger began to stir up inside David's heart and, and not just at Goliath. He wasn't just mad at the one who was defying his God, but he was also mad at the army, the Israelite men in the army that were too scared to do anything. Like, come on, guys. What are y'all doing? There's a challenge here. You see, because back then, most wars, well, not most, but a lot of wars were fought just by a couple of people. You may have a huge army that would come out, but if you had two men that would come out and battle one another, whoever out of those two men won the battle, that won the war. But nobody was willing. Even when they said what was going to happen, that the Israelite king would make your family free, would give you all kind of riches, would give you his daughter. Man, you were up there. But they had that label of being afraid. It was stitched into them. <laughs> you know, that was one thing about it. In the military, you know, when you got off duty, you took the military clothes off and you put on, on your civilian clothes. It was almost like changing a label. Here with the Israelites, they couldn't change labels. No matter what clothes they were wearing, they still had the label of afraid. But here is David. Here's little bitty David. <laughs> Small in size, Lacking a lot in experience. There was no way his strength was anywhere near what this giant was. But he was ready to do battle. He did not have the label of afraid on him. He had the label of courageous on him. <laughs> So instead of allowing this label of afraid to define him, he was wearing the life-giving label of courageous. And that determined who he was. Just like the Israelite, you know, the men of the Israelite army, that label of afraid, it defined who they were. Every time that Philistine giant would come out and they would cower down, that defined who they were. They were willing, hey, I'll be your slave. Just don't kill me. I don't want to come out and fight you. It was more about them where David was like, wait a minute. Who is this uncircumcised dude that wants to come out here and defy the living God? <laughs> How many times do we go out in public and somebody is defying the living, our living God, your living God? And we... That's just, to me, that's as bad as joining in with them. <laughs> David was determined. He knew who he was, but he also knew whose he was. <laughs> that was a good amen. He knew who he was and whose he was. Do you know whose you are? Are you the child of the living God? 
then we need to be living like we are. David had a firm grasp of his identity. So I ask you, do you have a firm grasp of your identity? Do you walk in that identity? Or do you have a mask that you change out depending upon where you are? Or maybe even a label. You see, because all those men, they knew what label they had. They knew they were fearful. They knew they were afraid. But they were okay with that label. Hmm. How many of you have ever been afraid? How many of you have ever been afraid because of something that was put in front of you against God? I have. I've been afraid for things that God has put in front of me. I've been afraid of things that I know Satan has put in, in front of me that goes against God. But at some point in time, I decided to change that label. Just like in the military, when I wore a uniform, if I left one permanent duty station and I went to another unit, I had to unstitch that label <laughs> And get the label of where I was going and put that label on. But I wore it proudly. And I wear the label of my God proudly. Not sinfully proud, but proudly that I am a child of God. And he loves me and I want to be that courageous and not fearful. I need to have that firm grasp. You need to have that firm grasp on your identity. You see, what you need to realize is that the label afraid produces fear. And fear is a thief. How many, how many of you despise a thief? Hmm? You'll do everything in the world to stop a thief from stealing your stuff. I got that little pop-up camper at the house. I got a little thing that I bought. It wasn't too expensive, but it goes over the, the hitch. So you can't just back up to it with a truck and hook up to it and drive off. So I'm doing something to prevent a thief from taking that. What are you doing to prevent a thief, fear, from stealing from you? You see, because fear loves to, to steal your courage. And when it steals your courage... It paralyzes you. <laughs> We've all seen it. Whether you've seen it in yourself or seen it in others. We've all experienced it. And there's so many different types of fear. Fear of rejection. Ooh, that's a big one. Sometimes we feel like we have a fear of rejection because maybe of our appearance. Our outward appearance, maybe it's our clothes, the house that we live in, the car that we drive, the job that we have, maybe behaviors that we have, the way you speak, <laughs> go up north. <laughs> Everybody's saying, where are you from? I'm Tennessee. Of course, and I make fun of like Renee and them when they get that northern Yankee accent. <laughs> and then we have that rejection of where, or, or, or we have this fear to where we work so hard to please others. We, we do whatever we can to please others. That, that, that is a form of fear. Then you have the one where you blame yourself no matter what it is. Even if you're not the one that was at fault. No matter what it is, if it didn't work out, you blame yourself. That is a fear. Staying in an unhealthy relationship because of a fear. Hiding yourself or your true self from others. Mm, have you ever had to not act like yourself when you're around somebody else? Hmm. And then you come around somebody else that you act totally different and they're together and like, uh, which way do I act? Hmm. <laughs> David could easily 
had fear of rejection. I mean, think about it. He walked up to his brothers. Who? I'm going to get ahead of myself here because I know this comes later on in my notes, but how many of you have an Eliab? Come on now. What in the world are you doing? Who do you think you are? <laughs> You're not good enough to do this. I mean, you are... <laughs> Okay, who you leave the sheep with now? Because you remember shepherds, they, they way down on the totem pole. And here he is, the youngest, the smallest. Mm. No. Nah. You know, fear of not being good enough. Mm. The Israelites were crushed by this fear. Not good enough. I am not good enough to go fight that giant. I am not good enough. <laughs> All they could see was his size. All they knew was his reputation. And they just couldn't understand here little David was with his lack of strength and experience. They just didn't understand his faith. Anybody here ever been around somebody and they say, I just don't understand how, how, how your faith, or they may not use the word, but I just don't see how you can think that. How do you keep going? What makes you act like that? Mm. <laughs> gotta have, you, you gotta have a firm grasp on your identity. How about, being, how, how about the fear of not being smart enough? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget. I, I never went to college. And I'll never forget when I left the factory and I started working for the engineering company. And I was like, and I went in there. I mean, when I first went there, I was okay. But then I walked in and I started seeing all these people that had bachelor degrees in engineering. I'm like, okay. Am I smart enough to do this? How about the fear of the unknown? Mm. Hmm. Kind of the same way, same condition. Before I left, I, I, I knew I needed to leave there, but where I was going, I mean, I'd been to this place for six years. I knew I was pretty secure in my job. And now I'm going to something, these folks don't know me. I really don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know really what this job is going to entail. So fear of the unknown. The Israelites encountered this same type of limiting fear. They cowered in their tents, allowing Goliath to mock their God and to demean them on a daily basis. Mm. Oh, but David... David waded right out into the unknown. I almost picture David as that little kid, you know, where there's a big mud puddle at, and as adults, we try to go around the mud puddle, and you see the little kid, and he just jumps right smack dab in the middle of it. Now, the adults, we'd go put on some rain shoes or what do they call them, galoshes, <laughs> or some waders or whatever, but no, David, he just like jumped in there with both feet. I don't need to change clothes. He trusted God in whom he had full faith in. The same one that protected him and equipped him when he was out in the field with his sheep. The same God that gave him what he trusted that God was going to give him exactly what he needed when he needed it. And I'm here to tell you that each and every one of you that are here, God has a stunning vision for your life. Mm. Hmm. But here's the thing. If he showed it to you all at one time, you'd run. If he'd have told me back in 97 when I was sitting in the pew uh, at the church that I was going to and, and he asked me, why are you sitting here? And, he, and I had a calling upon my life. If I'd have known then what I would be doing today, I think I would have left that church and not come back. If he shows us everything of our life, 
it'd be too much to handle. Because then we have another fear, the fear of failure. <laughs> Whew. There's many times that I fear, fear that I'm going to fail in something. Mm -hmm. But I have to trust that God's going to be right there that's going to help me. Because that fear of failure could be because I needed to learn something. Mm -hmm. Fear of failure could be that it's prepping me for something else coming down the road. Mm -hmm. That fear of failure, it could be failure because they need to see God, not me. <laughs> so that's just five fears that I just threw out. But what I'm trying to tell you this morning is that afraid label, it's time to put on a new label. That new label, it's time for us to put on courageous. I mean, really, even as Christians, it, it's very easy for us to walk around with that label of afraid. And I believe since COVID, Corona has come around, we have that new label. Christians, the church in general, has a label stitched on them called afraid. This was not in my sermon notes. I hadn't even thought about it. So thank you, Holy Spirit. It's time for us to get a new label. It's time for us to get a label of courageous. It's time for the church to become courageous. It's time for us to be like David and just jump out there with both feet and say, okay, God, what is it you want me to do? I, don't, I do not want a fear of rejection. I do not want a fear of failure. I do not, I'm not worried about how smart I am. I'm not worried about if I'm good enough because I am a child of God. That's my identity. Is that your identity? That's my identity. It's time for a new label. And we need to look for ways of wiping out fear. So I want to give you six ways real quickly of ways of knocking out fear and to have courage. Number one, I think is the biggest thing that we learn from David is to have a humble heart. Mm -hmm. And you think about it. <clears throat> When Saul had finally, <laughs> when God was done with Saul and God sent Samuel to Jesse's house to anoint one of his men, one of his sons, you know, when Samuel's sitting there, he's got to say, oh, well, this is going to be fairly easy. These guys come walking in. But yet, God says, nope, 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 nope. Is that six? <laughs> Don't you have anybody else? Well, yeah, there is little David out there in the, uh, in the field with the sheep. Well, bring him on in. And he walked in, and I can almost hear God say, yes. <laughs> See, he might have been the one that smelt like a sheep, but he was the one that was humble. You see, we have a tendency to go after our giant seeking glory mm. before God has even prepared us. Mm. I'm, mm, yeah, I can raise my hand on that one. Mm. See, but that wasn't the way David was. Many people never slay their Goliath because they think caring for the sheep is beneath them. <laughs> as I wrote that I felt like a bug just got stepped on and squished I think that's probably one of the biggest things is having a humble heart doesn't matter where God put you if he put you there he put you there for a reason be humble number two believe that God and his love are bigger than your giant Every one of us in here has at least one giant that we're dealing with. Every one of us in here have at least one Goliath. Some of us have two. Some of us would have to take our socks and shoes off to count them all. I might even have to bar somebody else's toes and fingers to, to count my Goliaths. But my God 
And his love is bigger than any giant that we face. Whether it is COVID that you're dealing with, cancer that you're dealing with, whether anxiety, relationship issues, money issues, my God, your God is bigger than any of that. His love is bigger than any of that. <laughs> and the thing was that the Israelite army, they, they, they saw Goliath. And they saw Goliath as bigger than their God. Hmm. How many times do we see our Goliath as bigger than God? How many times, oh God, I thought you loved me. God, if you loved me, you would take this away from me. When you do that, you're saying that your giant is bigger than God's love. Hmm. Believing like David will cause us to act upon things that most people will look at and, and say that that makes no sense. Let me say that again. If you believe like David, it will cause you to act on things that most people will say, that makes no sense why you did that. Because it's my faith in God that causes me to act. <laughs> most of the time, it's something else that causes us to react. Mm -hmm. How many of us have ever reacted? <laughs> Number three, expect opposition and use it as fuel. <laughs> expect opposition and use it as fuel. Here David is. He goes, who in the world is this uncircumcised Philistine that, that is coming out here and defying our God? And here's David's brothers that are in the military. And, of course, you know, whoo, that rubbed them wrong. <laughs> and what happens when something rubs you wrong? You get angry. <laughs> he should have expected that opposition from his brothers. <laughs> I mean, th th that, I just think that that's the way most people deal with things. They lash out. And, and every one of us, I said this a while ago, every one of us has an Eliab. Every one of us has somebody. It could even be a Christian brother or sister. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's been many a times when somebody went to plant a church and you say, why in the world are you planting a church there? Or I wonder how many missionaries that, that, that when they told their family that God's calling them to go into some third world country and they go, no, you can't do that. Why are you doing that? <laughs> Expect opposition and use it as fuel. Because I guarantee you, I know that David, now, now, now this is just my thoughts. I can't prove this biblically. I'm just doing this as a human being. But I can think, I can just imagine David when he's running at Goliath. <laughs> part of it is, watch this, Eliab. <laughs> uh, let me show you something, big brother. <laughs> I'm going to beat you, big brother. Let it fuel you. <laughs> mm. Number four. Remember God's past faithfulness. <laughs> Every one of us in here, we have had God do something in our life. <laughs> whether it was a healing, whether it was something that you prayed about and, it's like, and, and, and he done it within just a little matter of time, and he's like, Wow. Or whatever it is, every one of us has had God do something. And we've seen God's faithfulness. We need to remember his past faithfulness. Because if he was faithful to you in the past, why is he not going to be faithful to you today? Or why is he not going to be faithful to you tomorrow? If we say that he's the same today as he was yesterday and will be tomorrow, we say it, but do you believe it? Hmm. We need to have faith 
in his past faithfulness. See, God, watch this. God wants his glory to inspire you. God wants his glory to inspire you. I mean, you let something miraculous happen. Man, you're just like, yes, let's go do that again. Let, let you, know, you know, let's let's go do it again. I remember when I went to Columbia and we would go to these different churches, and like, man, we would leave one service and we're tired, and wore out, but I can't wait till the next service. <laughs> hmm. Remember this: He created something unique for each one of you. He created something for Sandy, for Bisc, for each and every one of you, something unique for you that he wants you to do. But here's the thing. When you live in fear, you limit the impact of what God wants to accomplish through you. <laughs> and hear this. You don't have time to live in fear. Hmm. Let me say that again because I think only one of you heard me. You don't have time to live in fear. Hmm. You are not promised tomorrow. Number five, wear God's armor. Hmm. If you go on and read down in there later on in those verses, <coughs> Of course, the men, they're all talking when David makes that statement and it finally gets back to Saul and Saul says, bring me this guy who is ready to go to battle with the giant. So David walks into Saul's tent and Saul starts trying to dress him out in his armor. <laughs> he gets it all on and like he can't even walk. <laughs> Almost picture his little kid. He got all this armor. You know, he, he can't walk, and much less the sword, and swing the sword. You can't fight your giant with somebody else's armor. Hmm. There's many people that'll tell you, "Well, this is how I overcome what you're doing. I went through the same thing you're doing. Here's what you need to do." That's their armor. Hmm. You need to wear the perfect tailored armor that God has for you. <laughs> you know, when I go buy a shirt that I actually want to button the collar, I don't say button the neck because me and you, you know, we don't have a neck, head, shoulders. <laughs> but when I go to buy a shirt in order to button here, it's like a tent down here. So they got to take it in. So it's tailored. But here's the problem. Even when I do that, this part here that should ride here is down here. So it's tailored the best it can be, but it's not perfect. God's armor for each of you is tailored perfect for you. So it protects you. So, so not only can you move and you use it, but it also protects you and you can use it exactly the way that it was meant to be used. Quit trying to wear somebody else's armor. Number six, finally number six here. Know you are loved. <laughs> know you are loved. When you believe God is, is with you and that he loves you unconditionally. Mm, that's a big one. God loves you unconditionally. No matter what you do or no matter what you don't do, no matter what you do that's good or no matter what you do that's bad, no matter what you don't do, whether it's good or bad, God loves you. Mm. And you will face even the greatest of life's challenges with limitless courage because of the love of a limitless God. So how do you live a life limitless? <laughs> because you're serving a limitless God. If I serve a limitless God, then why can't I have a limitless life? I can. 
But there's just six things. You know, this first one is here, is afraid to courageous. We need to get out of this afraid, out of this fear. We need to get rid of that, that label. And we need to discard it. Don't pick it up again. And we need to get firm in our identity as a child of God, of whose we are, who I am, who I belong to, who you are, who you belong to as a child of God. Brother, you want to come on up? Here's the thing. You know, we sang that song, Victory in Jesus. Jesus defeats all of our giants. You know, we look at David, and David slayed Goliath. No, God slayed Goliath. God used David. <laughs> God didn't have to, but here's the thing. Remember when I said a while ago, God wants to inspire you with his glory. I mean, think about it. He took that sling and whoosh, and that stone landed perfect. Right there. And it inspired him so much. He didn't turn around and go, woohoo, look at there, Eliab. No, it inspired him so much that he went over there and he picked up Goliath's sword and he cut his head off. Hmm. Here's what I want you to picture today. Or not picture, but here's what I want you to understand. The story of David and Goliath, it's actually a picture of what Jesus came to do on behalf of all humanity. <laughs> See, David was a shepherd. Jesus is the great shepherd. Israel was afraid and weak. You and I, whether we want to admit it or not, we're afraid and weak. <laughs> David defeated Goliath. Jesus defeat, defeated our Goliath. <laughs> See, their, their Goliath was a physical man that was standing there. Our Goliath is sin, death, and Satan. <laughs> and up on Calvary, Jesus defeated all of them. John 11, 25 through 26 says, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. <laughs> that's a strong statement. But that's God's word. <laughs> Look here. When Jesus walked out of the tomb, death was not allowed to come out see the death stayed in the tomb <laughs> death was not allowed to come out and make us afraid anymore mm. and on the third day <laughs> courage himself walked out of the tomb mm. and when he came out alive he made it possible to live his courageous limitless life let me say that again now. When he came out of the tomb, it allows us to live his courageous and limitless life. The church needs to be a community of courageous giant slayers because of him. That's right. Because of who we are, because of who we serve. Courage is who you are because of who Jesus is. <laughs> I think I need to say that again. Courage is who you are because of who Jesus is. <laughs> we'll read a scripture here. 1 Samuel 17, 45 says, David replied to the Philistines, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name, <laughs> in the name of the Lord of the heaven's armies. Mm. How many times do we need to go when we go up against a giant, we need to say, I come in front of you. I come to you in the name of the Lord of the armies of heaven. 
Man, that's powerful. Are you ready to slay your giants? Are you ready to, uh, you know, to, mm, to get rid of that label of afraid and to become courageous? Romans 8 and 35 says, Who shall ever separate us from Christ's love? Shall suffering and affliction and tribulation or calamity or distress or persecution or hunger or destitution or pain? It just goes on. There is nothing that can separate us from God. Everybody say nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing can separate you from God. Hmm. Let me get everybody to stand. I found it interesting the other night, uh, Shannon and I were texting back and forth and <laughs> coming up with song lists and giving him my list of sermons for this series. And I had just decided what we were gonna start looking at on Wednesday nights. <laughs> and uh, this past Wednesday we began and uh, you're more than welcome to join us because we got about five more nights, but we're on Psalms 23. We're looking at each verse. And if you'll notice how I'm doing Sunday morning is a little bit different with our altar song. And I hadn't even told him about it because in the text he goes, hey, what do you think about this song for altar? And the name of the song is Psalm 23. I said, well, I think it's pretty interesting because we're starting studying study <clears throat> on Wednesday night to Psalm 23. So as he sings this song, there's not many of us, so there's plenty of space up here at the altar. If you're ready to change your label from, from afraid to courageous, I invite you to come on up here and tell God and worship him and praise him. You might say, well, I don't have the label of afraid. Okay, do you have the label of courageous? Because I would question that in each and every one of us, even myself sometimes. So right now, I just want us to spend some time with God and get our label and know who you are and whose you are. Surely. 
shadow of darkness <laughs> which is the world that we live in is full of darkness that we will fear no evil we do not have to be afraid that we can be courageous because we are your child <laughs> we are your children <laughs> and the battle is already run the battle is already won we have victory <laughs> we already know how it ends Mm. Let us rip off today, beginning today, let us rip off this label of being afraid and let us put on. Let us not walk around without a label because then that means I can be whatever label I want to be at the time and moment. But let me rip off the label of afraid and put on the label of courageous. <laughs> Woo. And on the other side, it says God's army. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Father, I thank you and I praise you. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. And the church said, amen, amen, amen. Ready to take.